The reaction used to synthesize esters is an equilibrium, uh, which means that in order to obtain a good yield of ester, you need to understand and be able to manipulate the equilibrium um, so as to drive it as far to the right as possible. So let's look at what happens first. Here's the acid and here's the alcohol. And I've designated their hydrocarbon parts as R and R prime because they could be different. They don't have to be the same. Uh, these are the reactants. The products on the other side of the equilibrium are the ester and water. And you can see what's happened. The OH group of the acid has melded with the OH group of the alcohol. When they join, only one oxygen remains in the final ester uh, molecule and the other oxygen and the two hydrogens are ejected as water. A catalyst for this reaction is concentrated sulfuric acid. Um, a small amount of this is added to speed things up. And in addition, it's useful to know that the forward reaction in this case is endothermic. So how can a chemist ensure that she gets the best yield possible when she's synthesizing an ester? As with all equilibria, there are a number of ways that you could approach it. You could increase the amount of one of the reactants. Uh, usually the, more of the alcohol is added because this can act as a solvent as well. So both a solvent and a reactant at the same time. Uh, on the other side, you could remove the ester as it's produced. Uh, this drives the equilibrium to produce more product. This is usually done by performing the reaction in a distillation apparatus. This is a distillation apparatus. Uh, the reaction takes place in this vessel here, and uh, usually it's heated up by a heating ma mantle or a Bunsen burner, some source of heat. Uh, and anything that evaporates off travels up here. The thermometer is just for keeping track of the temperature. And then down this tube here. The glass tube through which the vapors travel is covered by a glass jacket. That's this here. It's called a water jacket. Through which uh, water can flow. The water is completely separate from the vapors. It's a separate compartment but it serves to cool the tube down. Um, the cooling causes the vapors to condense back into liquid. So the vapors are traveling through here and they eventually condense and they become liquid and then drip down into a collection uh, flask at the other end. Now, esters are much less polar than acids or alcohols. And uh, you can justify to yourself why this is and we can talk about it in class. Because they're less polar, they have lower boiling points than acids or alcohols. So this means that if you keep the temperature under control in this reaction, the acid and the alcohol will remain in the reaction flask, but the ester will evaporate as soon as it's produced. This removes it from the reaction, which keeps driving the equilibrium to the right, and it also allows you to collect your pure product at the other end. So there are two other strategies that we could use in addition to those. One is to remove water from the reaction, uh, so this is another of the products. This can't be done by distillation because water has a higher boiling point than most esters and many alcohols. So you'd have to heat the reaction too much to get it to come off. However, concentrated sulfuric acid has a second function apart from acting as a catalyst. Remember we were using conch sulfuric as a catalyst, um, but it also functions to remove water. And the way that that happens is this. You may remember sulfuric acid has a high heat of hydration, so it's very exothermic for it to uh, be dissolved in water. So when concentra concentrated sulfuric acid is added to this reaction mixture, it forms strong intermolecular bonds, hydrogen bonds, with any water molecules that are produced. And this effectively prevents the water from interacting with ester molecules because it's essentially bound to the acid. Uh, and if it doesn't interact with the ester molecules, then the reverse reaction doesn't happen, or at least doesn't happen as fast. The final strategy is based on the fact that the forward reaction is endothermic, so heating the reaction will drive it to the right.